Guys, our next guest is one of the most famous AFL coaches of all time. Having coached over 600 games, won four premierships, and he played an integral part in the expansion of the game when becoming the inaugural coach of Greater Western Sydney. Or you could look at it this way. My team, the Demons, last played in a grand final against his Bombers in the year 2000. I went as a 13-year-old boy with hopes and dreams, but my team got thumped by 60 points that day. Cheers, Kev. And a young boy's hopes and dreams were crushed. Ladies and gentlemen, a man that has made some of the most influential changes across our sporting and cultural landscape, please make him very welcome. It's Kevin Sheedy. Hi. Wow. Fancy getting to see a demon on the way out. God. Great to be here. and it's, um, I can thank you for the organisers. Obviously, uh, Festival 21. But my uh, topics that I've been asked to talk about um, are building a team. And of course, leadership, because you need that sort of leadership when you're working with many different types and styles of people. You can be given a team, or you have to create a team. So where you're going out in the workforce, or you're already in the workforce, and you're in a position, and you want to keep working and developing yourself, and hopefully you do, then that's what I've had to be able to do most of my life. I'm a tradesman in my first seven years, um, I spent two years in the military forces to get understanding about them. It was called national service in those days. And of course, along the way, you're actually collecting knowledge. You're taking in what your instructors are, are teaching you. Doing an apprenticeship on a building site is very dangerous. Being in the army when you've never had a gun in your hand in your life, you, ca you cannot be reckless, you've just got to be responsible. I've never ever played with explosives. I've never handled a hand grenade, but you just can't drop it without the pin in it. So that responsibility in those early days always gave me the discipline to actually want to make sure that uh, when you're working with different types of teams, that you actually can keep them safe and uh, secure in their workplace particularly in football, where it's very, very dangerous on the training track. So leadership, you collect. You just don't go into a hospital, and on the right-hand side of that lift, born leaders are on the fifth floor on the north wing. It just doesn't happen that way. And when you're given an opportunity to be responsible in your work, whether you're at university or any area that you're in the workplace, have a consideration for what other people and who other people want to do or who they are. Very, very important that. They're not going to be like you, but you want to be a leader, then you're going to have to actually give. You're actually going to have to give for their development. And actually have to ask them to invest in the project that you're possibly on. Most of my life, obviously, it's been out on the football field. But in my latter years, I felt that it had to be more than just the game. And that's where we got into employment for youth, where we put a dollar surcharge on every finals ticket for the last 25 years and have raised over $40 million. And out of that, we've achieved, in a leadership capacity, 14,000 jobs for boys and girls and 2,000 for Indigenous boys and girls in that breakdown. Very important because it's not just about a game of footy. It's what you can do for people. One dollar every finals ticket since 1991 or two. Then you move into the next bracket. Do you really want to have a better Anzac Day than what we had? And this is where your creative juices can come through at some stage in your life. Mine were later when I got involved in moving into different courses around the world, listening to great speakers and going to listen to what they can offer me for my development as a person, particularly in those, in those years of 30 and 40 bracket. Edward De Bono has been one of the best assistant coaches I've ever had because he made me think what I'd never been taught. Kevin, go and find out what you don't know and then help the people that work around you and develop them. 
Yeah, the gold nuggets sometimes are the ones that you can't see. You just can't see them at that stage. But they're coming. They're coming and they're there. How do you find a mentor that you really, you think might actually influence you? And if they can influence you, then take them, take them into, your, into your life. And to me, uh, lately, just lately in my 60s, I've really enjoyed reading about what Clint Eastwood does. He's 85 years of age and he's writing letters to 60-year-old people. Now you're in the prime of your life. You've got a lot of knowledge. For God's sake, keep yourself fit and eat well. And then try and catch me. And he's just finished three fantastic movies, American Sniper, obviously, um, Gran Torino, and The Four Seasons, which I really love the three of them, particularly the, the two about the four seasons in my vintage. So you can go out and cherry pick any person in the world to assist you. That's what leaders do. And then they actually grab that knowledge and they take it into their friends and their staff and you share it. That's what I always tried to do at Essendon. I always tried to do when I was out talking to schools. I want to show something very courageous to the young team that I just coached up in Sydney. Then I might add and edit out on the screen Jessica Watson in a little sailing boat out through the heads around the world and that edited highlight is and all I want you to do is train hard and get the ball. Not that hard, fellas. You want to show a spirited person that never gave up and won a gold medal on the last step. You just edit out Debbie Flintoff. It's all there. Never won the gold medal till the last drive. That's where you go and cherry pick ideas that are sitting there in front of you that might inspire you, mate, because we're all different. So I move from other sports, women in sport, I'll go to the movies and I will chase knowledge anywhere. The last two years I've been to the Super Bowl and over to see Sir Alec Ferguson. I don't care because I'll invest. Because I want to have a really good life after 70, so I've got to invest in my 60s and take that with me. Share that with my family and with my friends and whoever else that employs me. Because I always ask myself, and not many people have the courage to ask themselves, would you employ yourself? Would you really employ yourself? Because you expect the company that you work for, you expect that the teachers that are lecturing you, <clears throat> but really, are you the person in the end that wants to grow and develop and find the life you really want? And that's leadership coming from within yourself. I mentioned before, you're given a team or you could be asked to recruit a team. Essendon, in 1980, I was given a team. Most of that group of players did not want to really win the premiership. As a matter of fact, by the time we won the premiership, I cleared 70% 70, 70 of that playing list. I brought in a whole medical staff and a whole new recruiting staff. We changed the landscape because we had to. We lost our first premier grand final and then we won the next two. But we had to change. Never be afraid of change. Actually attack it. Make sure you are changing. Don't sit there and not develop. Move into the next part. Our first period as a sports coach, I was 32 years of age, I asked our board never to play a practice match in Melbourne and they found that so strange. I said, well, we're in trouble and hopefully you can see it because at Essendon, where I just signed a contract, I well, signed nine contracts for three years, so it was a decent long contract, okay? But we were surrounded by government infrastructure and unwittingly, that was causing us a lot of problems. And that's what you have to do as a leader. Find out the problems. 
We couldn't sign one kid up on the tarmac at Tullamarine. You wouldn't believe it, there's another airport called Essendon. We couldn't sign a fan up there because it was government infrastructure. They're still there. So what we had the capacity to do is change the mindset of our club. And we made the airport our strength. We flew to every city in Australia where a plane landed. Doesn't matter whether it's Cairns, doesn't matter whether it's Swan Hill, doesn't matter whether it's Albury, obviously Perth and the major cities, Alice Springs, Darwin, when we went to Darwin, wow, we found a person called Michael Long and he made us look at ourselves here in Melbourne because most people in Melbourne hadn't moved around as much and leadership is out there chasing really what you want to do in your life. Then in my Michael Long, we ended up finding about 33 Aboriginal players that we recruited. Prior to that, we hadn't recruited one for 40 years. Prior to that, there were only three Indigenous players playing in the AFL. So we actually started changing the landscape. A half a million Indigenous people, of which half are women and half are male. We're going to actually start recruiting these young men, bring them into Melbourne. I've heard all the ridiculous uh, excuses. It's cold. They won't like the mud. All the bullshit you've ever heard in your life was a negative, negative, negative. I said, well, we're going to change that. So you're going to have to overcome negatives if you're going to be a leader to take on a team. Can't be done. We'll get rid of the word can't be done. Get rid of those words of, um, oh, but what if, oh, it'll be too hard. You'll find them. There'll be people there sitting in front of you. You're building a team, get yourself some really exciting, creative thinkers that get out there and make things happen. They'll want to work with you and you've got to have the capacity to care and the capacity to listen on what their strengths are because their strengths at many times are, are better than yours. It could be the area where you have a weakness. And don't be ashamed of that and never fear that because they will actually help you get better and stronger in that area where you're probably slightly deficient. I've got plenty of deficiencies, but I just keep working at them. Just keep working at them. Try to make an opportunity there for your people that you're working with as a leader and a team to follow their dreams still. I go and ask school kids, hi, hi guys. Are you still dreaming you? This is grade three and four. And they just put their hand up straight away. The whole class, wow, what an honest class. I guarantee if I walked into a year 12 girls' convent or a boys' convent, no way, no, they put their hand up. All of a sudden it shuts down somewhere. I have no problem in explaining to you that I'm the best dreamer. And I still chase them. When I was at school in St. Ignace, Richmond, I looked out the window when I'm in year grade three and they were building the 56 Olympics. And I thought, wow, how am I going to get into the MCG? I've got to get there. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to get there. Why? Because I dreamt that I had to be there. And I got there. They advertised for lolly boys. Wow. They got me in. Then I saw the inside of the MCG and saw the sports and the... Uh, Obviously, the Melbourne Football Club, because they owned it, basically, in those days. And that's the journey I went on. And I lived there for about 50 years. 380 games at the MCG. Why? Because I dreamt when I was a kid I was going to the MCG. And I'm not ashamed of that. I'm very, very proud of that, because no one's got anywhere near 380 games at the MCG. No one. So they're the sorts of things that you can actually give by making sure that you can inspire the people around you, the energy, the care, the love, the attention in their lives. I'm a plumber. I'm one of seven kids. My father died at 18. If I can do it, you can do it. You have a look at all these trains. Are we great in the movies now? Of course we are. We're winning awards all the time. We've got great race horses. We've got great sports people. The only, world, only country in the world that has four sporting codes. Now we're going to have an AFL Women's League. Fantastic. Good. What's next? What can we do? 
28 million people, just over half of California's population. It wouldn't be one country in the world of 23 million people that has built the stadiums in this country for our fans to go and have a look, to build the buildings. Our population is the same as Sri Lanka. But we're a pretty great country and I don't think we understand that sometimes. There'll be problems, we have to overcome that. But that's a challenge. And that's a challenge that you can do because you, ladies and gentlemen, you're the next Australia. Every one of you. I can hopefully live in a reasonably safe place being developed well, but you are the next Australia. And the last comment I'll leave you with is life is a gift from your parents. You didn't earn it, you were given it. Cheers.